Okay. So, the wonderful folks at Team Elderblood, and I helped a tiny bit, put together a meta snapshot. We're the only ones still doing meta snapshots. Everybody else quit. And I don't know if you guys remember, there was a time when uh, CDPR first made the change that, like, hid names in pro rank. That, like, all the pro teams protested and they said, you know, we, we're going to stop doing meta reports until CDPR reverts that change. And then CDPR is like, fuck you. We're not going to do shit. We don't give a shit about meta reports or the community or anything. Like, you all don't matter. Uh, and then, like, a few months later, people resumed them. But, um... Why is this video still there? Okay. So, um... Each, each deck has a link to, like, a version that is considered the best or the most common. There's... At each... There's tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, and then they're ranked in terms of stars. Along with... Um, we also have a list of like other decks. You want to find some meme decks. This is a good like Cosimo's Casino. Oh, the GOG site is having. There you go. This is like a double cross rune right Cosimo, uh, Cosimo Master Mirror deck. Like just, just good shit, right? And then there are some people who just wish that like every game was against like a, a funny deck but also that that funny deck should be like beatable most of the time but like still be at their rank or MMR and if there's like a strong deck that they don't know how to beat that makes them mad and they wish that that wasn't what they matched into and they look for someone to blame and instead of blaming like the game designers or themselves they blame the meta report and say, oh, if it wasn't for the meta report, people wouldn't have these decks. No, that's about as stupid as the people who complain about how rap music has like gang violence in it. It's like, no, y you missed the point, buddy. That's the reality that they live in. Art is a reflection of reality. Therefore, their songs and their poetry talk about violence because they live in a violent environment, okay? <laughs> like, society or whatever is violent, right? And they're writing and singing about their life experiences. Therefore, that includes, like, instead of getting mad at the song and be like, they, they got the cause and effect backwards, right? Like, politicians would be like, we need music that is wholesome and we should take this stuff, this stuff is not appropriate for children and all this stuff. It's like, then that reality is inappropriate for humans. We should change the reality, and then the art that is a reflection of reality will change itself, right? It's like complaining about war movies instead of World War II. Like, <laughs> World War II happened before World War II movies, not the other way around. So, anyway, that tangent is to... to to point out that the people complaining about the meta reports have cause and effect backwards. They think they think that like the meta report is released and all of that are runs to the Team Elder Blood website and is like, oh shit, I can play Svalblood now? This is the first I'm hearing of this. <gasps> Syndicate Vice is overpowered? Oh wow. You know, this was only played in like the last three top 16 and 64 qualifiers, and it's everywhere on Pro Rank, and if I can put out any stream, I'll see this deck being played. But I didn't know about it until just now, when I read the latest Team Elder Blood meta report. Extra, extra. <laughs> Get all the overpowered decks right here. Now I can go on ladder and ruin Timmy's night. Timmy has six jobs and 13 children, and he just got home after his, you know, <laughs> fifth double ship back to back. Uh, and, and he just wants to sit on the couch, pull out his trusty Samsung Galaxy Tab, and play a game of G Went. But now he's getting clowned on by this guy who's playing unitless shoot smell blood whatever <laughs> damn those team elder blood meta report guys <laughs> always ruining my night there is some truth to that there is no truth to that because i know because 
I see how the meta report's put together. They're like, hey guys, what are like the top decks you're seeing on the ladder? And we all link decks that we've seen on the ladder. And then they take those decks and like who can write a description for each of them? And then we write descriptions. Like the meta report is a reflection of reality that already exists. What truth is there to that? <laughs> like, once the meta report is out, if somebody, like, sees it, fine. But uh, decks in Gwent are very easy to spread. Decks always spread with or without a meta report. Therefore, it's not... It's not causal. Yeah, and tournaments. And, like, I ran into Spelling Bee, right? On ladder. And I, like, copied his deck. Because I was like, that guy knows what he's doing. He's high rated. That was an interesting deck that I hadn't seen before. Um, <laughs> this, the, the tune, unfortunately, won't be in the VOD. Um, okay, now I'm getting distracted. What was I saying? Oh, I saw Spelling Bee play that deck and and I cop you know, I, I I I made that deck myself. And then like I look next day, Eddie is playing it on his stream. The next day after that I see Kerpatin or sorry, Kareem was playing the day after that, which is today, Shinmiri and Kerpatin were playing it. Deck spread. Just cause like you are out of the loop doesn't mean that like it wasn't gonna spread without you're not like <laughs> like Ladder doesn't go off the meta report. The meta report goes off the ladder. Now, some people at very low ranks are like, oh man, why am I running into these meta net decks? Bro, it doesn't matter. Like, I promise if you're rank one or lower right now, there are so many holes in your play that like a good player could play against you with a bunch of clowny decks and you can play the meta decks and it won't matter. And like, Like, lots of times, we, people who are usually in pro rank take a break and they get demoted, right? And when they come back to do the climb, they can play whatever they want and they'll go like 80% win rate. Because people at low ranks are just, they, they, they're just bad at the game and that's okay. Like, it's fine. Not everybody has the time or the inclination or the skill or whatever. But like... <laughs> you're not losing... Because you ran into a Puzzle Express deck at rank 5. Because I promise you, even in pro rank, 60% of the people I run into playing that deck play it badly. Okay? <laughs> like, that's not why you lost. It wasn't the deck that beat you. The opponent, like, it wasn't the fact that the opponent net deck. Like, a lot of these meta report decks are actually very weak uh, at lower ranks. Because, like... Um, for example, Pincer Maneuver Shoop. This is a very hard deck to play, right? Because, like, you have to manage your leader charges. You have to know what you're drawing in what round. You have to know, like, what your reach is. You have to know which options to take in every matchup. Like, you have to recognize the opponent's deck and be like, this is a Rockus. I'm going to take Drog, right? Or, like, this is such and such. They have COC, um, and I can't get last say, so... I'm not going to worry about playing Muta Generator because my Erlen's going to die anyway. Or I'm going to do something else to take advantage of my boosts, right? Like, there's just like a million different paths you can take with take with a deck like this. That like, I don't even recommend people play this deck uh, uh, at, at lower ranks. Like, and some decks are fine at lower ranks, right? Like, this is probably easier to play at lower ranks. Why? Not because it's a dumb deck. It's not. It takes plenty of skill. It's just that like, it has a lot of raw points. And a lot of times at lower ranks, just having points wins you games. Like, people just don't... Anyway. Random Shillard against the Fruits deck. Yeah. <sighs> anyway. So, what? What's the, what's the guy that has some points? Uh, Razorik said this matchup, matchup pretty much confirms what we've seen during the last qualifier. Sending any flex here at the top are one step ahead of the moment for a variety of reasons. They have many tools of removal, a devastating combo, great bronze craft, decent consistency. 
If I have to pinpoint a nerf of sort, it would be difficult as the entire package in those decks is simply perfect, so much so that they just don't have a lot of space for substitutions. SK Sob is as optimized as you can possibly... Uh, I mean, you can people make subs, but it's... I mean, it's pretty optimized. That's fine, NG. It, like, SK Sob is just very strong because it has Care Trolled on top of everything else. Like, Care Trolled and Sov, uh mean that, A, you have a really good short round because Sov and really good tempo when you need it. Care Trolled means you can answer two threats in one turn, uh, which is very important. That means you don't lose to, like, greedier decks. And then, uh, you know, you have Spell Blood for massive burst and wide punish. And, like, then you have the Canute uh, Sigvolt combo, or just Sigvolt in general, that, like, has to be answered or it will, loot, like, win the game. So, just, like, more threats than any, than most decks can deal with. Along with good points, good tempo, good short round, and ability to defend a bleed. Like, which means that even from blue coin, they can lose on even and, and win plenty of most of their, those, you know, a lot of the, the times. Even if they lose on even, they can still win the game. Like, you can nerf it in any number of ways. You can nerf Sov, you could nerf Sigvald, you could nerf Care Trolled, right? Or you can nerf Svalblood. Like, it's not some magic... Like, oh my god, this is... We can't figure out why this is strong. It's just got five really strong things, and other decks have three really strong things. And five is more than three. Uh, SY and NG. Uh, SY is mostly because Ixora and Sesame carry over. Combined with, like, Jacques KOB and... You know, Defender and Candle and Novigrad. Like, there's just, again, too many threats. Right? Whereas, like, your typical monster list has, like, three things you have to answer. And if you answer those three things and you still have points, then good. SK barely... Yeah, I mean, they run a lot of 4Ps, right? And you have a little more room, but they have battle stations. But the package, the combo... What combo package is he talking? There's, there's three NG decks. There's Cultist, there's Enslave, and there's Imperial Formation. All three are uh, solid, viable, played at a high level. I, I don't know what he's talking about in Set in Stone. With that said, if I target a single, it would be Torres. The problem is the card doesn't need a nerf, but... It, uh, I, I think Torres not boosting for as much as it did would go a long way towards fixing. Oh, and Ball, sorry. Four. four. Nilfgaard has many, many, many viable decks. Yeah, Ball is also extremely strong. It's just that it's harder to play. And most people don't want to like spend the effort to learn all the lines and all the matchups, which is a lot of effort. Certainly way more effort than anyone in this thread has ever spent on a deck in their life. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I mean, literally everyone, because there's some people in here that are like pro players or whatever. But just in general, like people don't know this, but like, for example, in the lead up to the mid-season qualifier, Puzzle and Kaneki together played like 500 scrims. Just the two of them against each other. They played like 500 games. Like you understand? <laughs> Most of you don't play 500 games in a year, okay? They just, like, they would just play friendlies and 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 test different lines in different matchups to know, like, what they got to ban and what, what wins against what on what coin and what lineup to bring. And, like, <laughs> it's, it's not just because they play a meta deck or some action is OP. Like, most of, most of you, and a lot of times me included, don't even understand, like, the level of like thought and and brilliance and decision making that goes into like half the plays that the, the top players make like we joke about how gwent like the draw your goals sure there's rng and there's luck and when skill level is equal or close or like within a zip code luck can change the outcome in the short term but in the in the in the long term like it, it it's good player will always win like me versus Spaya, best of 30 he will win 99% of the time uh, that that series current pf started as a meme deck kind of i mean i don't think it was a meme deck puzzle was working on it since like nine months ago and he was bringing it to tournaments no the troll that abused alchemy deck was just that was the meme deck but the rest of the deck the Patch of Fury, Sove, it used to be a Shoop deck that would go unit less round three and had a finisher of Svalblood. 
It just didn't have Sigvald and Knut. So once he tried and saw the power of, I think, Knut and Care Troll together, he was also running like Draco Turtle at one point in that alchemy deck. And I think that was a collaboration with Trusky. Trusky's very good at finding like Smorky abuse decks that, that like play a lot of points. And then that was getting countered. And so like it kind of got merged the old Shoop puzzles, Shoop Patch of Fury deck with Sovin's Foul Blood and this Care Trolled Alchemy that got kind of merged together. It's like they took the best ideas out of both and found a way to fit them all together. Like, you know. Like how a lot of decks are made are, are is like that. But most people are just not like even... And, and I just happen to know the history of this one deck because I follow Puzzle closely and we talked about this deck like after each tournament. Because I'm just like, oh, like I was I was cheering for you, blah, blah, blah. How, you know, what, what did you think? How did it go? And like, I happen to know about that one because Puzzle's my friend. But like, I don't know 90% of the shit that goes behind these other decks. Where they come from, how they're built, who came up with them. Like, there's a whole world out there <laughs> that we're all ignorant of. And... Yet, every time I see commentary on these decks or the meta or the whatever, everybody's just so goddamn sure of themselves. They just know. Like, they just know everything. Oh, like, just pontificating. Like, speaking out of their ass. Like, it's just... If I have a point to make when I do these Reddit reviews or whatever, it's that. Y'all know nothing, but you don't know that you know nothing. I also know nothing, but at least I know that I know nothing. That's my point. I would like to see some more humility and display of the fact that, that you know nothing in these in this in these comments. So going back to uh Norman, uh, who said the guy on Reddit made some good points. Can you tell me which specific comment you were talking about? Luck how 50% of tier one and tier two. Is NG and they all have very easy difficulty. Um, honestly, the difficulty is subjective. But, like, I wouldn't say Enslave Assimilate is easy. It's just that it's been around forever, so people know how to play it. I would not call this easy. And imagine not testing Angolim and Mush turnies yet. The comment at the bottom. Um, so just so you know, you can link a specific comment. Uh, so like by right clicking on the timestamp. Like this goes to that specific comment. But like the bottom could mean different things for different people because Reddit sorts different ways. So no changes from NASM for monsters. Oh no, for the meta report? Yeah, and honestly, a lot of it is like, we're just tired. The hidden ones? Beneficial leak? Oh, I wish you never did these. Some will thank you, and obviously if you hadn't produced them, someone would have. But tell people how to build meta decks in, in a deck crafting game defeats the point of the game. Uh, maybe for you. And in that case, you don't have to look at it. Has exact some truly awful metas? No, it hasn't. Like, you can see what cards your opponent plays. As soon as somebody plays a deck, it will spread. It's not spreading via the meta report. Which, except the death of the game? No, it hasn't. The death of the game is happening because CDPR is dropping support. And part of that is because of terrible, terrible business decisions. And part of that is because of factors outside their control. As... At as a twilight bro apostrophe usage maybe let people fend for themselves uh... like you think that all of us being worse at the game is good for the health of the game like every healthy game involves people sharing and collaborating and competing and cooperating and like building decks and then other people building decks to counter those decks like that is called a healthy meta 
That is the definition. If like nobody shares decks and everybody plays unoptimized shit piles, that game has already died. Like I promise you, that means that no one's playing the game. Like if everybody's isolated, like that. Some people enjoy deck building. I'm one of them. Some people don't. Like what you really want is custom lobbies where you can play like with whatever rules you want and not run into try hard. No fun allowing mid-range piles that answer everything you play. And I'm sympathetic to that, but the answer isn't the pro teams not publishing a meta report. And like, I don't, I happen to not have done almost anything on this meta report. And I'm just a guy who plays on pro rank. And I can look at every single one of these t labels and go make you the deck right now with like 80% accuracy. Like, card, you know, like, 80 to 90% minimum like accuracy for all the cards in all these decks. Because I've just seen them so many times. Years. Like this is these this deck is like a year old, a year old, a year old. Like <laughs> a lot of these are even older than that, and then just some little bits have gotten changed. Like the meta report isn't where people are getting these decks from. And like even if there was no website or spreadsheet or streams or no one to talk to about Gwent, and Gwent was a single-player game? Wow. If the only way, the only way this person's personal fantasy of a card game would come to re reality would be if uh, Gwent was a single-player game and the internet didn't exist and we all lived on islands by ourselves. Like, I don't want that. <laughs> like, if, if that's what you want, like... I don't know, go play chess against the AI and never read a chess book. Yeah, yeah, Kareem, don't get me started on the versions of these meta decks. I sometimes think that, like, uh, <laughs> the, the guys that put together the actual deck links put in, like, decoy cards just to spot net deckers. Like, I have not seen this exact variation played by anyone with Bin C and Morels and No Junior. Like, I've never... And Payday. Like, the Payday is the most sus thing I've ever seen. Like, what? What? what how did this... Like, why is there one smuggle, two bloody good funds, a Jacques, a pay? Like, the Payday is, like, just sticking out like a sore thumb. Like, if you're not playing Junior, maybe you're playing Tunnel Drill, right? But but it's... I don't know. Maybe it's, like, anti-cultist or something. Um, to kill a Deacon. But... Or like the Enslaved version that was actually, uh, the screenshot shows Angoline. Yeah, it says Devo, and then, okay, they, they just took the Diva out from the title. It wasn't supposed to say Devo. And you need Angoline because Cultus and because Care Trolled. Yeah, Net Decker Bait. Like, uh, on ladder, I'll see somebody play a specific card, like, oh, they got this from the TEV report. I don't know. This is actually the Miamon version. No, except... Does Miamon play Arbalests? I'm not sure if they do. This is a dumb card. Oh, wrong hung Hunger, Reptile, Deathwish. How many Cyclops does this have? Like, that's the only question. Okay, this is the Siegfried version, so this is what Kareem played. But not everybody plays Siegfried. Some people play Abaya or, or uh, Doragary or Cyclops. But that's it. Like, the rest of the deck's been the same. It's been the same since the one season after uh, Red Rain initially made the list uh, with with Egern and Osral and Aaron died. He didn't have Dol Duloc and Succubus. He had um, the 5P damage of whatever, Necrophage. I don't, I don't remember. Anyway, he made that deck the next season. People switched to this, and, and that's it. So... Like, th this isn't, like, a harmful comment or anything. Uh, the person's, like, respectful. They obviously... Like, I don't think they deserve 32 upvotes. They're, they're, they're bringing up a valid comment. They're really wrong. But that... This is the problem with Reddit's upvotes and downvotes, right? Up and down should not be you agree with this or you disagree with this. It should be... This is helpful to the conversation. This is not helpful. This is a helpful comment. It's just... 
we also want a way to say I agree without replying I agree. So we, so we need like we need four things like you know what I mean? There needs to be like I agree, disagree, and then like you know helpful, harmful. They're just two different axes. They don't have anything to do with each other. But like this is this sparked a good discussion, but it was all hidden because people disagreed with it. Mostly because people are saying, no, I want these meta reports. I am someone who doesn't talk to the pro players or in, in pro rank. I have limited time and I just, or I just came back to the game and I just want to see what where things are at. Maybe I want to see what decks I'm going to run into on the ladder when I play my own homebrew pile. So. Yeah, people get attached to their homebrew decks and get frustrated when they start getting whipped by meta decks. Sure. But, like, I think some of that is just mis misdirected frustration. Um, I'm someone who's, like, very, used to be at least, very persistent in pursuing a homebrew idea. Like, if I think something is interesting or could work, I'll just keep trying different variations. How can I make this work? Like, I'll play 500 games with a deck before I give up. I used to play 500 games with a deck before I gave up on the idea uh, and just said it's not good. But, like, most people don't have the time or the or, or the like conviction to keep pursuing that idea um or the confidence right but a lot of times those fun decks that we some of us want to play are just not viable because of game design decisions and you shouldn't be mad at the people playing the game in, in a way that allows them to win you should be mad at the people who design the game in a way that does not allow fun decks to survive so, like, you know, don't hate the player, hate the game. It's cliche, but, like, players can only, like, the only choices you have as a player is which cards of this pool that is available to you, you, cho you choose to put in a deck and how you choose to play them. That's it. We don't control the meta or what is winning or anything like that. And blaming the meta report for, for a meta you don't like is like blaming the paper boy for seeing bad news in the newspaper. Like, it's not the meta report's fault. <laughs> We're just a paper boy. We brought you the news. The news happens after reality. Like, reality exists. It got printed. We made it accessible to you. If you really don't like it, close your eyes and don't or don't read the meta report. But, like, it's still there. It's gonna be there. Yeah. That's all I have to say on that subject.